Wow, look at the action height at the first fret. Was this thing ever really playable? Hey everybody, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing good. Hope you guys enjoyed your weekend. Yeah, tomorrow is Monday and back to the nitty gritty. So we've been having some real shitty weather over here again and it's been uh, raining all day today. So I wasn't able to work on the Devlin in the garage. I've got a vehicle in the garage right now that is pretty much all polished up, really nice. And uh, yeah, I don't really feel like putting it outside in the rain to get all dirty again after putting in a lot of hard work, you know, doing a detailed job on it. So it's been kind of a rough patch as far as working on the devil and getting a few things done. It kind of sucks working on two guitars at the same time because you have one that you need to put color on it and you have one that you're clear coating and you can't do them both at the same time in one area because of the fact of the overspray. So if I were to spray color on the devil and I would get it on this one here. If I put clear on this one here, it'd get on the devil and you know, overspray really sucks. Now, this thing here is pretty much uh, pretty much done. I just have to do a little bit of a setup on it and do some nut work on this thing to get this action height at the first fret where it's supposed to be. So the strings that are on here right now, the string of choice are Dario's, and this was inside the case that the owner put in there, so I'm kind of figuring that that's what he wanted to put on the guitar. So it's tuned up. But I have to do some work on it still, get it uh, pretty much set up for the owner and you know, then ship it back. I got all the wiring done, pickups are installed, wired up. I have to get the pickup height set up, action height. Uh, I adjusted the truss rod on this thing after I ended up putting the strings on, stretching out the strings. Yes, I do stretch out my strings. It just makes it a lot easier for the strings to fall into place. Uh, and to keep the guitar in tune, you know, after tuning it up and then doing your setup makes it a lot easier. So yeah, I stretch strings out. So right now, as far as the neck relief goes, uh, I want to see it at 12 thousandths or somewhere around there. So I've got my 12 thousand shim. And let's go ahead and fret this where the body meets the neck. I'm not too sure how far down this truss rod goes, so I'm just going to do it there. And I am, I can live with this. I can live with that. That's not bad at all. So well, like I said, one of the things I have to do is, if you saw the beginning of this video, the action height at this first fret is really, really crazy. And I have a way of doing things uh, to get the action height at the first fret exactly where I want it. So if you see me ever using this tool here, this is a nice little gauge. And it basically, you know, if you have a level surface, you can zero it out on that level surface, and then I'll put it onto whatever is raised up, as long as you have all four legs of this sitting on a flat surface, and the surface that you have the pin on top of to measure is clean, and you know it's clean, you'll get an accurate reading. So what I'm looking at with this here is putting it on the fretboard, and then zeroing it out, and then I'll apply it on top of the fret, making sure that all four legs, and it's giving me a 51 thousandths of an inch. So that's how tall the fret wire is on the fretboard right now. Now, what I normally would do is I would add, say, uh, 18, 19, or 20 thousandths to that and get my shims together. Where are they? Right here, which I'm going with 18 thousandths. And uh, right there is basically the thickness that I have to make that slot off the fretboard at the first fret. So as you can see here, there is a lot of play right there right now. So I need to get that adjusted. So I already got my shims ready. I don't need this tool anymore. 
put that away. The nice thing about that tool is it shuts itself off automatically. The bad thing about it is as soon as it, it notices some type of movement, it turns itself back on. Kind of sucks because if you're wanting to save battery, especially if you stick it in a drawer uh, and you're constantly in and out of that drawer, it's constantly moving. So I ran across a few issues with this guitar and some of them were pretty easy to correct. It was finished problems. Some of it was the fretboard itself uh, created a big issue with this. Now this guitar, from what the owner says, is, is very unplayable, very uncomfortable, and just all around a, a, a shitty experience for him. Now, first things off is when I rewired this, I kind of shortened up some of the wiring inside of here so it wouldn't be a spaghetti mess. Now, when I mean shortened up, you know, you have a couple of pots over here that are about two and a half, three inches away from each other. You don't need five inches of wire to jump from one pot to another pot. So those wires were shortened up. As far as the pickup wires go, those I left the same. As far as the length goes, I just clipped off the ends of it so I had something new to solder to instead of using, you know, desoldering and resoldering to the old spot. Sometimes with wires, uh, especially with copper clad aluminum, which is an aluminum wire with a copper coating on it, uh, if you bend them from side to side a lot, especially close to the solder joint, they tend to break. So I went all fresh new wiring on this thing when I soldered everything up left of the original length of the wires because sometimes people like to take their pickups and maybe swap them out into a different guitar or something. So cutting down the wires to fit like this guitar in general uh, kind of makes that not work right when you want to swap out. Maybe you'll end up with shorter cables and now you got to solder pig, pigtails to it and it really doesn't look all that professional. So that was all left alone. Bridge has got the ground on it, not the tailpiece over here where the little V is or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so that's good. That I ended up putting a new ground wire on. Now, back to these frets. In a previous video that I was when I started working on the fretboard and I started removing the frets of this thing, as you saw that they're pretty easy, pretty easy to remove. They weren't difficult at all. It's not like they were bonded into the fretboard with some type of glue or um, the wood itself was holding them in uh, quite securely. I was able to pick it out with my fingernail so that really isn't holding too well. These frets on the other hand, these are Stumac, this is the stainless steel wire, uh, same size as the original frets that are on here. In fact, there are probably a little bit more meat on the top of these frets because who knows you know, how many times the other frets were uh, ground down, leveled, and shit like that. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so putting these guys in uh, was a little bit of a pain in the ass. Now, in the letter that was inside the case, the builder said that he made the fret slots for the frets themselves. Now, he might have done that, but he didn't think of the fret tanning as far as going into that slot and being loose. And he also didn't use any type of a glue, which showed in the note also that uh, he forgot, or this is one of the ones that didn't get that, which it should have, and it probably would have been... Um, probably would have been a lot more secure as far as these frets were in the fretboard not to start coming up now this wasn't a fret sprout issue they just had the frets were kind of sticking out a little bit but not because they were um sprouting from shrinking wood it was because that they were all raising up out of the fretboard now right now one of the problems was you know he had an issue where he had couldn't String would get caught on the side of the fretboard between the frets and the fretboard. No more. That's gone. So that's all worked out. Even on this side, it's the same way. It just kind of rolls right back over into place. When I first started doing the plucking and the radius of this fretboard, I kind of made a mistake in that video, and I kept saying 12-inch radius block that I used on there, which is I was wrong. It wasn't a 12-inch radius block. I used a 10-inch. This thing had a weird type of a, I don't know what the guy did as far as radiusing this fretboard. Either he used a 10 or he used a 12. You can't use both. Or can you? 
I've never heard of it and I've never seen it before. I know that there are some fretboards that are different going down the fretboard, but it it's not a slight change. You know, you go from a 12 to a 16, you know, something like that, especially with some of the shredding guitars. Well, this wasn't like that. There was just some areas that were uh, a 10, and you go backwards and it's a 12, and you go forwards and it's a 10 again, and you go back again and it's another 12. It just was all over the place. And one of the things that I ended up doing with the radius block is kind of like a test, all right? When you have a radius block, now, I picked the 10, and I kind of figured, okay, this is a lot closer to the 10 than it is to the 12, but then it changes more closer to the 12 than it is to the 10. But when I did the radius block, and I used the 10 inch radius block, and I had my sandpaper underneath it, and as I went up and down the fretboard, you know, I looked at the sandpaper to see how even the sanding scratches in the paper as far as the um, uh, sawdust you know, from the fretboard itself, and what the fretboard was looking like from the scratches of the sandpaper as what was getting sanded. And it seemed like this is what it was. This is supposed to be a 10. So instead of using the 12 inch uh, radius Stumac fret wire that I already had pre, uh, pre-radiused and cut, I ended up having to do my own. I have the fret wire, I got the, the bender to do it, and the same fret wire that came off basically went back on here as far as what the top of the fret is like. So that worked out really good. But the problem with was installing the frets. Old frets came out easy. New frets went in really, really hard and difficult. I really had to uh, press them in. Uh, I pounded them in a little bit, not like, like but a ball ping hammer or something like that real heavy a sledgehammer i have a fret hammer that i could use to put in the frets so i got them started with the hammer and then i pressed them in with my press and that ended up giving me a nice nice secure fret uh there's also glue inside that fret slot i i always do that for some reason doesn't matter how tight the frets are going into the fret slot i always put a little bit of uh what is it not the thick the mild ca glue i use more of but in some cases i'll use the thicker ca glue like in this case here i'll use the thicker ca glue and the reason being is is because when there's a binding on here well air kind of like escapes when you're putting frets in and if you use a thin set glue and you're putting frets in and that works on both uh non-binded and binded necks where if you're putting using the thin set glue and you're tapping them in it kind of splashes the glue all over the fretboard and you don't want that now when i cleaned up this fretboard and gave it its clean radius basically what i was looking at doing is really removing the glue residue that was all over this fretboard the frets on this thing were glued on each edge of the fret I don't know if they tried to wick it or not, which usually you would use a thin set glue because when you hold it up on an angle, you put a drop in there and it just spreads out into the fret, under the fret, into the fret slot. That's not what was done with this. It was just a bead of glue on each side of the frets. So that made it a little bit tough to remove that as I was doing the radius because I wanted it to be nice and smooth to get rid of all the lumps and bumps on there also to put the radius uh, evenly all the way down instead of jumping around from 12 to 10 and having some, a nice surface to put a fresh set of frets on. The problem is, is there was some type of foreign material inside some of these fret slots that was making it hard for me to put the fret in and get it to seat properly. Up here and over here were the worst spots I don't know if there was a piece of metal in there. I was using the, the Stumac tools that I have. One of them is a saw for binded necks, which is not a big long saw. It is two small saws on a post with a space in between them. Teeth are going one direction for pushing one direction for cutting and the other side is for pulling. And it gets all the way up to the edge underneath uh, or inside the slot up cl close to the binding. but. In some of these spots when I was using the hook, the Stumac hook for scraping out whatever dirt, debris, dust or whatever, and it's got a little way you turn it and it pulls out a lot of the material that's inside the fret slot. 
I was scraping something metallic, something metal that was inside the fret slot itself. That made it difficult. I couldn't get a hold of it on a right angle. I couldn't pry it out. Uh, I couldn't see it. And I had to do something about it. Otherwise, I was going to be nipping a lot of the tang off of that fret. And it wouldn't be a lot of uh, tang holding that fret in place. I could have done that route, but that would be kind of like, you know, not the right way of doing it. And that would cause the problems later on. So what I ended up doing is I have what's called knockout pins in different sizes. And all they are is just rods about yay long. And there's a bunch of them, like I said, in different sizes. I found one that would match the slot on this thing and kind of tapped it down into the fretboard more to wedge it in there. I don't know what it was. I can't believe it. it's a brad nail holding in the binding. I, I just don't understand what it was. There was no glue inside this fretboard whatsoever in the fretboard. On top of it, yes. In it, no. And none of the binding really had a buildup in the corners of glue. I thought maybe that was the case. But wood glue, when it's fully dried and fully cured, it chips away pretty easily. I mean, it would, you can pull it out of there and it would be no problems. I couldn't get it up. So I tapped it down. I used a bit of the thin CA glue and put a couple drops inside there after I pounded down the, or tapped down, keep on saying pounding, after I tapped down whatever was inside there to hold it in place and keep it from coming back up later on. And then I used my gauge for the fret slots, stuck it inside there, went to see how much room I had for the tang of the fret used my saw and my scraper, kind of gave it a little bit of extra room. I built up a little bit with the glue. Uh, after using the scraper on it, I wasn't feeling that metallic feel anymore, or hearing that sound when I was rubbing up against it. So putting my gauge back inside the slot again, bang, I was able to put that front into place and it was not a big deal at all. But just getting to that point. So all the frets are nice on this thing. They're nice and even, everything's been leveled polished and or level radius and polished I have a tool that I use for radiusing uh, kind of giving the um, crowning a lot easier as far as uh, having to do it without using files I mean using sandpaper and I've got this little block of wood it's got these metal rollers on there that don't move they're stationary they're kind of built into the wood you put a sanding pad underneath it like this which I had to pick up more of these because I use that thing all the time and all it is is a sandpaper with a foam backing on there and when you go over it puts a nice crown on top of the fret and I've been using that a lot lately that's why I had to get more sandpaper and this works out really good so all in all setup time I mean there's not much more I can do with this thing it's been polished up Everything is installed, but a few bits and pieces here. So I want to get into getting this nut. You can watch if you want. Uh, get it down to where it's supposed to be. All right, so the action height really hasn't been played with at all. The height of the pickups has not been played with at all. The neck relief is where I want it. Now it's time to get this nut action height, which isn't going to change anything as far as later on where I put the action height or the pickup heights at all. I'm just adjusting it where it's sitting at the first fret. And it has really nothing to do with what's going on over here until I get the setup going. So one of the things that this has a problem with too. Now, I don't know if the same string, yeah, I do know the same strings were on this guitar because when I pulled out, they had the colored ball ends, but I'm not sure as far as what gauge of strings were on this, if it was like the new pick or not. But turn this fan off so you can hear it. And you will hear there you go. All three of these are binding in a nut. Let me turn this fan back on. I know you guys don't like the fan, but the uh, fan kind of keeps air movement in this room with uh, the door closed. And uh, it gets kind of not stale in here, but it'll end up getting like stagnant air inside this room if I keep the fan, the exhaust fan off. So what's going on here is not only do I have to adjust the nut 
action height at the first fret, but I have to make sure that these slots are open enough to where it accepts the string and it's not going to bind in later because that can cause you tuning stability, especially if you're stretching a string while you play. So I got to make sure that that is okay. And then I have to knock down this nut a little bit on the top and then repolish it. So I'm going to go ahead. I've got my gauges already set up. Uh, my shim gauges. I've got my nut files over here. Get into this right now. Alright, so the guitar is in tune right now, and what I want to do is set this action height on here. Now, this bridge is a locking bridge, so I'm going to have to unlock it. And I can't remember if this was a metric. I think it is a metric. So let me get that unlocked so I can adjust this. Alright, so I need my screwdriver here. And I want to see where this is falling at right now. So I got about 332s to 12th fret on the low E. And I have a 64, 564s. That's where that's at. And then I want this to be a 560 forts. The owner can readjust this if he wants it to be lower. Okay. And it's gotta come up a little bit now. Alright. So I'll go ahead and lock that back up again. I'm not torquing these things down to where they're real tight, but the owner needs to remember that if he wants to adjust the action height, that there are set screws over here that are locking that bridge into place. This way he doesn't have a problem with doesn't have a problem with anything as far as trying to turn this and they're not going anywhere. So now I want to tune her back up again. Yeah, it feels pretty good. It feels real nice. So the action height's done. Now I get the pickup height done. And I've got some little tools for doing that as well. Now I wasn't able to change out the screws in this mini humbucker over here because I don't have any machine screw threads that are um, as fine as what these guys are. Uh, the poster's a little bit bigger. I don't know if the guy who did this, because usually the screws are around this size, they're usually small. This got a real big head on there, and the shaft of the screw where the threads are are 
pretty big. I don't know if he drilled out and retapped the metal sleeve that's inside of the uh, bracket of the mini humbucker or not. So I couldn't do anything with replacing these screws, but I did change out these guys here to a chrome screw to uh, kind of give it the same look. Now, because the guy's routing was such a shitty job on this thing, I had to put new screws inside there after I kept and plugged up all the holes that were from the old screws. This one here is a little bit on an angle. So and I couldn't help that because there's like no meat over here in this corner whatsoever to kind of get the screw to go in straight, but the rest of them are in straight. So let's go ahead and check out the base side. So that's got to come up. Oh, that's a Phillips. Go down a little bit. A little bit more. There you go. And let's go hit the treble side of this side. That can go up a lot. Now what I did here with the strings is I didn't come out all the way to the point with the fret. So these two strings, you have an extra note. These two strings, you have an extra note. So let's check this one out here. I can go up. Actually, I was going down. Now I can go down. That's good. This one can go down a little bit more. That's good. A lot of times when you change one side, it throws the other side off. Not bad. That can go down a lot. That's good. This I don't have to mess with. Now the truss rod cover, I put a little bit of a clear on top of it. Not a hell hell of a lot because this is such a small piece. So that's got a little bit of a clear to wood seal. And you can kind of see the flaming coming out of it a little bit better now as well. That's off. Right, these are flats. So that's going to go what? Forward. Right on it. That's got to go forward a little bit. A little bit more. All 
Already done it. Oops, wrong one. Just gonna go forward a little bit. That's good. Then go forward a little bit. That's good. That's good too. So that's about it. This guitar is pretty much almost complete besides the bits and pieces that I need to put on the knobs, truss rod cover, and the back plates. Uh, the guitar is set up. I wouldn't say not ready to go just yet. I want it to sit overnight. I know that the neck has had the string tension on it for, I know, over 24 hours, but I want to make sure that everything in the setup is still good before I ship it out to the owner. There's one thing that I kind of want the owner to look into, and that's possibly a string retainer up at the headstock. Now, the one thing that I kind of noticed is that there is four of the tuners that are up higher and two of the tuners that are kind of down lower. So what they were trying to do is get the strings to pull themselves closer to the headstock in order to get that angle that they're looking for to keep the strings inside the nut. Well, the one thing that I've kind of noticed with it is that this can actually go down more for the strings to sit in the nut a little bit better. So you might want to look into some type of string retainer. This reminds me of a Kramer headstock. I don't have any of... Uh, the string retainers that probably would fit this thing so he might want to look into that for himself and take care of that if it becomes a problem if it doesn't become a problem then it's not going to be an issue or big deal so you guys take it easy have a good one thanks for watching and uh you know be shipping this thing out soon